Right, this weekend, the UFC is coming to you from the apex in Las Vegas. The heavyweights are on deck. Jorginho Rosenstreich taking on Shamil Gaziev. That is going to be an absolute banger. Don't miss it. Also, do not miss this, because we've got a bit of British interest as well on this card. As Mohamed Mokayev gets his shot at a top tenner in Alex Perez in the flyweight division. And Mike, with the way that the division is all lined up, we've just seen Moreno and Roy Val go at it. We know that Pantoja needs an opponent for 301 in Brazil. I'm getting ahead of myself. I know I am. I know that Albaz is there. I know that Kai Cara France is there. But if there's a standout performance from Little Mo this weekend, he just might get the phone call for Brazil, might he? And that is exactly what he said to me this week because we did the fighter meetings for the UFC. The man is brimming with confidence as always. And I'm not surprised. Incredible wrestling, great jiu-jitsu, undefeated, massive personality. He just lights up the room when he walks in and he lights up the octagon. I said to him, because he's taking on Alex Perez, a man that's been around for a long time, a man that's been in there with the absolute very, very best people. He said the thing that he's going to do, and I'm excited for this, is that he's got to start using ground and pound more. He said he's going to put people down. He's not going to look for the submissions. He's going to look to smash their heads through the octagon canvas. And then that will present the submission. I was like, oh, my God, this is going to be brilliant. I can't wait for this. <laughs> Alex Perez, not to be underestimated, but you're absolutely right in what you said, Adam. If he can go out there and beat Alex Perez in fashion with the undefeated record, with the state of the division right now, Mohamed Makaev moving up in the world, going to the top, potentially fighting for the belt. Prez is a little bit of an odd one, isn't he, Nick? He's had 10 cancellations since his last victory in 2020. I know he's had two defeats along that way as well to the very best guys mm -hmm. uh, in the flyweight division. But getting into the octagon seems to have been a bit of a problem over the last four years in the UFC. Yeah, I don't know whether he's the unluckiest fighter in the UFC or the pickiest fighter in the UFC, but you're right. He's had 10 scheduled fights all of which have been cancelled for one reason or another and let's be honest more often than not it's alex perez that's pulling out of these fights the two fights he has had when he lost them both before figueredo for the belt he fought pantoya uh later on and got beat by pantoya in the first round as well obviously pantoya the current champion no shame in losing to the top guys in the division but if he wants to remain relevant to Alex Perez at this stage of his career, he's got to be busier. He's got to fight more often. Now he's up against it this weekend with Mo Mocky. I think Mo is young, he's keen, he's undefeated. He's got this incredible confidence about him. But actually, Alex Perez has faced a guy very similar to Mo before. Jose Shorty Torres was the best amateur we've ever seen in the sport. Came, won all the accolades at the Amateur World Championships, multiple gold medals came in, looked like he was going to be a superstar, arrived in the UFC eventually, and it was Alex Perez that sent him packing out of the octagon, never to be seen again. Now he's got a very similar story with Mo Mokayev, but of course Mo is a very different fighter from Shorty Torres also. So I think this is perfectly set up for Mo to be Mo, to do Mo, to get on that, uh, that microphone and scream for his tickets for Rio. Well, he won't be backwards and coming forwards for asking for it. There's no doubt about it. Is it important that he doesn't get uh, carried away by looking at those two defeats in that four years for Alex Perez, Mike, where he was submitted in the first round by the elite guys? It's important that Mo just fights his fight rather than trying and forcing that statement early. Yeah, no, of course it is. Listen, he's trained with Colin Oyama, a man that's kind of got legendary status around here in Orange County, California. And he has a guy down there called Jiva Santana, known as the arm collector. The jujitsu on this man is unbelievable. I used to train with him myself. He is a tricky man. And he's been training with him nonstop in preparation for Mohamed Makai because he knows what Mohamed represents. We know about the wrestling and the jujitsu ability, the finishing ability that he has, mm -hmm. and also the potential to almost be finished and then escape and then immediately finish his opponents. That's what Mohamed Makai represents it. He just has this way of finishing the fights and snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. Mm. But Mohamed's aware of that. He's got to change that up because certainly with Alex Perez, a man that does have the experience that still feels that he has the potential to become a champion. It's a fight where neither man can make a mistake. Yeah, can't wait for it. Also on that main card at the weekend at the Apex, Umar Nurmagomedov is back in action. We haven't seen him for a year. It's good to have him back in the bantamweight division as well. And we've also got a Briti bit of British interest uh, on the prelims too. Yes, David Bashra. I'm claiming him as British. Okay, he's on there, undefeated, coming through. Obviously resided in London for a long period of time, now resides out of Las Vegas. But Christian Leroy Duncan 
uh, is in action against Claudio Ribeiro, Mike. And after a little bump in the road to his UFC tenure, Christian Leroy Duncan seems to have got the train back on the tracks. Yeah, and, and I wouldn't even call it a bump in the road because Armand Petrosian, whilst he's not exactly a household name, I'm telling you, he's a very, class. very good fighter with world-class grappling ability. So he could have been kind of like uh, a kryptonite for any fighter, certainly a European fighter, because Petrosian, his grappling is ridiculous. Now, CLD, Christopher Leroy Duncan, the striking on this guy, the taekwondo, you can see the inspiration from his coach, Mark the Wizard Weir, an absolute legend of mixed martial arts, a man that once had the fastest knockout in the history of the sport. I think it was seven seconds back at UFC London. <laughs> uh, you can see the inspiration. You can see the way that he fights CLD. Duncan, he's six foot two. He's a beautiful striker. And he's going up against another guy, Claudio Ribeiro, a man that is a knockout artist as well. Yeah, he's Brazilian, but he likes to get the job done with the hands. This will be a fun one. And all the best to Christopher Leroy Duncan this weekend. And both men, may the best man win. I'm calling You're a big the fan fight. of disclaimer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly that. Nick can get stuck into it because you're a big fan of CLD, aren't you? His style, you've really taken to it. Huge fan. You know, and I think Ribeiro, even though he's got 11 fights, uh, 11 wins and 11 finishes himself, eight of them in the first round, Ribeiro, I think that will play into CLD's hands a little bit. He wants someone that's going to come forward. You want someone that's going to be not scared of letting their hands go. And I think that will provide... Uh, with with Chris with big opportunities to land highlight reel stuff and he has got a highlight reel back catalogue from his amateur days another elite amateur CLD was he used to put people away in sensational fashion then we've seen it early days in the pros I think we'll see it again once he gets his foot going to UFC and Mike's right you know what that loss to Petrosian that first loss in what is it he's 12 and 1 now or 9 and 1 sorry that first loss on his career that kind of could be the making of him that'll just pull his feet back down on the ground because but Sozian didn't beat him up the entire fight. But to use a boxing term, he old manned him. Mm. Just had too many tricks in his arsenal. And he talked CLD. Listen, there's other ways to win fights. Everything hasn't got to be a spectacular knockout. There's ways to win fights by winning each individual five-minute round. And I think he'll win from that. He's come back and had a big finish since then. I think this is going to be a little bit of a smoke show. But I also think it could be a coming out party for CLD on Saturday night. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and the best thing for British fight fans is that it's not an early hours of the morning type of stay-up job. That's right. Main card's nine o'clock. Nine o'clock UK time, ladies and gentlemen. Meaning more Mokhev might be in the octagon around about quarter past ten, half past ten, something like that. All right? So have yourself a nice little something to eat. Have yourself a nice little something to drink. Kick back, sit on the sofa, listen to Mikey B calling the fights and enjoy your night of entertainment on TNT Sports. As fight night comes to your life. <laughs> 